What's up, fellas? It's Labor Day. We just got back and we're un unloading the trailer here. Check this out. When's the last time you see one of these bad boys? This is a two-wheel drive Rokon. It actually floats on water and it is two-wheel drive, two-stroke. Absolutely a cool piece. It's like a military uh, agricultural tire tread on it. They're basically indestructible. Disc brakes. Two-wheel drive. It's a Chrysler two-stroke, isn't that correct? Yes. I so. What a cool piece, man. Wisconsin. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to do a video of this running later. The boys already rolled this one out. This is an absolutely pristine, all original Honda CR125R Elsinore. It's un, un, unrepainted, untouched up. It has a little bit of wear on the engine cases. But other than that, this thing's just pristine, original. Next one out is a Elsinore 125. I think this is the first year of the liquid cool model, Elsinore CR125R. 1981, it looks brand new. A lot of people are home doing barbecues and stuff. Well, this is what we consider fun here. So hopefully you guys uh, appreciate it and enjoy, enjoy watching these bikes. I'll leave in the comments what your thoughts are about this, this pick we got here. There's some primo stuff. This is an all original, 100% original Suzuki RM252 stroke. This is a 76 model and it is just stunning right down to the original stickers on the tank. These came from our collector friend, Randy who had these stored, I forget what they call it, but he had in-floor heat in the facility, so there's no condensation, so the bikes just stayed pristine. Billy just just, just told me, what, what is it called, Billy, the flooring? Radiant. Radiant flooring. Look at this, huh? Elsinore, Motocross Fox, CR250R, Simmons Forks, Fox Shocks, Aluminum Swing Arm, Total Moto Legend right here. This OEM is OEM pipe chrome plated. That's pretty cool too. I've never seen that done. They actually chrome plated the original pipe on it. A lot of work to do that. You gotta clean the pipe surgically before you plate it. Total eye candy. Beautiful piece. Amazing. Box factory. This next bike here is is, is uh, a Montessa Capra VR. This is the Piece racing VR. motor. VR, yep. Yeah, you can tell by the head, right? Yeah, look at this thing. That's a rare bird. We got three pristine Montessas. This is all original, unrestored. All Low these production. bikes are original collector's bikes. Low production stuff right there. Kyle got here, brother. What do you got there? Husqvarna. Look at that thing. Look at the front number plate on that. This is back when the manufacturers had a sense of style and, and, and uh, uh, pride in, in the product. It's an uh, aluminum tank, beautiful paint job. This is an original Husqvarna 250. Fantastic machine. Woods, desert, or motocross. Nice piece. Wow. What a beauty. So the best part about this, guys, is you're actually going to get to hear all these run and get a full description, history lesson on, on all these once, once they're done and they go to the tech center. This one caught my eye. This is a 1979 Suzuki RM125. I had the RM100, so talk about a uh, time machine, time capsule, memory machine. This thing's just beautiful. What are your thoughts, Billy? It's, a, it's like showroom perfect. I don't see anything wrong with it. I've, I've never seen one this old, this nice. Guys, when you, when you call in, this is the guy you're going to talk to, Billy Blythe. He's, he's a uh, five-time Isle of Man veteran, former pro. I guess once you're pro, it's, it's like military, always pro. Uh, road yeah. racer, trials rider, yeah, yeah. motocross rider, a little bit of everything. But uh, road racing was this thing, and, and now, now Billy's doing our purchasing. So when you call in, you're going to talk to Billy. He's, I think in the last week, I know you bought over 30 motorcycles, right? Yeah, for sure. Some really, really nice stuff, just like this RM. Yeah, that, this is this is a load that Billy found. In fact, you just got back. There's some more bikes inside that you just picked up, a KX500, a CR500. So sometimes Billy goes out to do the picks. He goes to Daytona with us every year. I think we're on like five or six years running. Yeah. We've been to Daytona yeah. together as a team. So uh, you're going to deal with Billy or June or his, his, uh, his, his, his daughter, Sarah, might answer the phone, or my son, Junior. Right, Junior? That's right. You and Billy are buying a lot of bikes, aren't you? 74, right? Yeah. Are you looking for anything special? You want to tell the guys what you're looking for? As far as? Motorcycles to buy. Motorcycles? CR500s? CR, yeah, yeah, we do that. Yeah, 89s, right? 89s. <laughs> if they're all 89 500s, you'd be happy. What do you got here? I'll settle for a CR250. Yeah, this is 74 KTM uh, 250. Correct. Hey, who signed it? Signed by Mr. John Penton. Mr. John Penton himself. Who else? Merger years. These are these are really wow. Cool. What a beautiful piece. Competition bikes. So so we were looking for all kinds of motorcycles. If it's got if you have a collection of bikes and you want to sell it, give us a call, eight six zero because we got cash for bikes, eight six zero four five four seven zero two four. And we're one of the few companies around that'll step up and, and write you a check for a hundred thousand dollars. Or, or uh, if you want to sell them on consignment, like we have a, a local museum uh, that's closing and they want us to sell all their bikes. Bikes going back to nineteen oh three. 
we will put them on our YouTube channel. We're getting on average about 200,000 views on a good day, 150 on a slow day. So uh, 6 million views a month on the channel, which leads me to the following. Only 10 of you guys watching have subscribed. So hit the subscribe button, nation button, share the like and share the videos. It helps our algorithm. So um, in any event, if you have a collection you want to sell, we'll either buy it outright, bring it in, restore it, get them all running perfectly, or we can come to you and help you sell them at your place sometimes. Everything's negotiable, so give us a call at 860-454-7024. But check this out. This is an original, all original, 360cc Montessa Copra VB. This is the big bore, the original big bore two-stroke. It was at a period when motocross technology was uh, leaps and bounds, changing every year. This had the Bitor gas shocks on it. Just a beautiful piece, and it's all original. What do you think of this thing, Kyle? I think it's wicked cool. So what, what do you do here, Kyle? Uh, project manager. I pretty much uh, order all the parts, organize who's going to work on what, and uh, just kind of keep the business flowing. So you got 18 guys that you, you got to keep going in the right direction, huh? Yeah. And how many motorcycles about uh, on an average month? Um, well, we average do about you know 100, 100. 50 to 100 bikes a month, and uh, but that's right now that, that's rest we're going through the restoration shop, and then yeah. some bikes are coming like this that we don't actually restore. So, and like right now, I mean, we, we your best month was February, right? Yep. How many bikes did you do in February? Oh gosh, I, I forget honestly. Junior, how many did you do in February? In February? Yeah. Oh man, was it over like 130? No, it was 167. How come I'm the only one who remembers that? It's actually on the bulletin board inside there. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty significant statistic. But we're we're growing, the team's growing. We're always looking for mechanics. Um, but as far as Kyle's position here, basically him and I work closely on every bike that comes in. We'll give it an evaluation and decide right off Jump Street, are we putting new tires on it? Uh, does it need any extra parts do, or do we want to leave it original? So Kyle actually orders all the parts from all over the world for these motorcycles and then sees them through the uh, process of the tech evaluation with, with the mechanics and then the, the cosmetic restoration if he needs it. And then he brings them up here and, and helps us get them ready for, for sale. So. Um, and whose museum is it? Mine. That's right. <laughs> you, you packing heat today, brother? Uh, not today. Not today. Not today? Hey, no. it's Labor Day, so, so you can have some wack noodle come up here and try to rob us on Labor Day. I know. I forgot. I forgot about it. Listen, what days sure. should you bring your, your gun to work? Probably Monday through Friday. Yeah, any day that ends in Y. <laughs> <laughs> Usually packing heat. But, uh, you know, hey, we got millions, millions of dollars of motorcycles here. So if you wonder why we've got uh, weapons all the time, well, I shouldn't have to explain that. Yeah. but. Well, what do you got? Oh, we got a, got a visitor. He's cranking tunes. Billy, what you got here, brother? Hey, man. We got the unobtainium. This is a really, really, really rare piece. It's so, it's, no, I haven't. And this is this is the weirdest thing. This is my era, 79. And this is, uh, I knew of the PE and I knew of the RM, but I didn't recall ever seeing an RS. This is a 1979 RS 250 Suzuki, which was basically the motocross bike with lights on it. So very, very, very cool, very, very rare piece. Um, yeah, Randy gave us a, a, a good, a good deal on this one. I was gonna, I was, uh, he was kind of high on the price. I was gonna pass on it, but you know, he threw in something to me that's priceless. What is this, Billy? This is the side stand and the axle nut wrench. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen it. Did you see this? He he took he took a wrench. And made a kickstand out of it. He, he wrenched that fits on the axle and bent the bottom of it. So it looks, that's, that's actually not a kickstand, but he made one. Yep. Very cool. Very cool that's indeed. Isn't that awesome? There you go. Now you, now you can ride. I can't wait to test ride this thing. This is going to be a really fun bike, man. Awesome. And you can ride it at night because it's got lights on it. So, what? okay, guys, this is, this is, do you know what this is, Junior? Uh, I've been told. It's what is old, it? New old stock, 125. It's a Montana. brand new. Look at the tank. N never, never been ridden, never been started. Montessa Capra, made in Spain, 125 cc. Listen, guys, it, it's got a little bit of dust on it. <laughs> That's about it. it was, the facility it was in had the, what, what do they call that special heat in the floor? Uh, radiant, radiant. radiant heat floor. And uh, the thing is spotless, man. So, pretty cool. Three, we have a 125, a 250, and a 360 Capra. If you're a Montessa collector, or a Honda collector, or a Rocon collector, Hey, th this Rokon, I kind of like that. What a beautiful piece. And this thing right here, my goodness, look at this. Wow. 
these all are pristine, pristine, highly collectible museum pieces. We have to do very little to these. They will all go through the mechanical process, all new fluids, uh, fuels, and air up the tires, check everything out, whatever they need, we'll get them 100% mechanically and cosmetically dialed in. And hopefully some of them will stay in the museum and the rest of them are all gonna find a new home. Look at the original paint on this gas tank. It's got a little bit of patina right there. How cool is that? Very low hour, completely trick racer. Hey, Billy. Let's show them what you bought home. Where'd you go? Where'd you go to pick up the, the three gems you got inside? Oh yeah, down South Jersey. Good friend of ours. He's an awesome guy, Rich Cusimano. Let's go check him out. Yeah, yeah. Guys, if, if you don't already know, we, we bought Randy's trailer too. Um, we're always looking to increase our fleet. Now we've got a 20-foot featherlight, a 28-foot pace, a 32-foot featherlight, this 34-foot pace, and the 44-foot featherlight. We've got the, uh, the flatbed GMC 3500, the diesel van, and two diesel dualies. James has the 28-footer. Well, when, when I saw this trailer all hooked up with the E-Track, I was like, this is a no-brainer. It's basically brand new. It's a 2017, and he, uh, used it to, he, he, he bought it back to his shop and used it to store two of his collector cars in here that he ran out of space in his shop, so it hasn't really been on the road. So he bought it in 2019 used with very little, low miles on it. It's got 2019 date code tires. Uh, it does have some graphics on it from the previous owner that we're going to take off. And Chrissy's going to put a Kaplan America, Kaplan Cycles, New England Motorcycle Museum graphics like we have on that trailer on it. But 34 foot, we can pack easily 20 bikes in here, uh, putting them in sideways like these were. So we got a, a, a Yamaha Seika 550. This is going up for sale this week. And then three... Primo bikes. What do you got here, Billy? Got an RM 2006, I believe, 250, mint original condition. There's, there's not a thing wrong with it. Runs like a, like a new pen. Then you've got my personal favorite over here. Look at this thing. This is, this is a, there's a story behind this one too, isn't there? Full documented. Yeah, full documented rebuild. Um, you know, quite a bit was spent on it, and uh, nothing was held back. Junior told me he spent $4,700 on the motor. Basically, every bearing, seal, gasket. Everything in the motor is brand new. Right. Frames powder coated. It looks like a brand new motorcycle. Yeah, it absolutely does. And it runs mid. It starts right up idles. This is tail wag. This is perfect. This is exciting to me. Check this out. This is what, uh, a, what year is this one? 88. It's an 88 KX500, but check it out. You put the restyle kit on there with the new fender and everything. Uh, it has a brand new set of late model. Uh, I don't know if it picks it up, but those are black DLC coated fork tubes. Uh, Tusk, the entire front end on, on, uh, off of this is off like a 2018 or 19 KX500 custom rims, wheels, aluminum radiators. It even has the 250 gas tank, which is the hot setup. It looks so much more modern than it is. Um, great year. I think it was the first year of the disc brake uh, on the rear or maybe second year. The only item on the bike that I don't like is the rear fender. It's got the original rear fender. and There is a restyle kit. New fender that we have in stock, actually, which is going to make the ass end of this look as cool as the front end, and it's going to get a full Steiger graphics kit. So this one here, um, we're going to have a little fun with that one because it's already a complete high-end resto mod uh, with the performance suspension. I bet you Junior would like to... Hey, Kenny, you see the suspension on this thing? Yeah, KX. Yeah, it's got the late model KX, uh, Kaaba Triple S forks on there. I bet you that thing would be a hoot at the wake, huh? Put a big sand tire on there. This one here needs nothing. We're just going to do the video on it. It's done. So stay tuned. More 500s coming your way. This, this is going up for sale too, the CB1000. And if you're looking for an XR100 or a 250, uh, I might be selling my personal XR100s and 250s for uh, a good reason that I can't really explain right now. But there's a big purchase we're trying to make, so some of the toys are going to go. I might even sell the, the uh, Patriot missile here. Billy also picked up this, actually this was donated to the museum. It's a Husqvarna 125-2000 that needs uh, a rebuild. So we're going to do a frame up on this one. And uh, it's got the Marzaki forks on it. A lot of potential here, but this was donated. Who donated this to the museum? Oh, a fellow out in uh, Arizona. I can't think of his name right now, but uh, definitely a generous donation. Yeah, no doubt. Junior, how come Big Black's all dirty here? You, you've been running it through the, through the mud and water here? I gotta hide my keys again. Ah. Yeah. Don't didn't don't you have your own XR six fifty? I don't recall. Yeah. Oh, uh, one. 
So who, who donated the bike? A guy named Jim Green out in Arizona, very generous Jim Green. donation. He rode the bike in the desert and loved the bike, but uh, uh, he had some issues with it and then uh, life changed and he was unable to continue riding it. So uh, he parked it and generously donated the bike to the museum. Thank him very much for me, please. Indeed. That's awesome. We'll make that brand new and find it a new home. This is Sarah. Sarah, if it's not Billy or Junior, then Sarah answers the phone. You're the brains behind the operation that gets all the, all the, what do you do here? You're a notary public, right? Yes. So you, yeah. no, you notarize documents. What else do you do? Uh, help Junior with sales. Um. Aren't you the one who mails out all the titles and everything else? Yeah, I keep these guys organized. <laughs> and you also track the fundraiser for the roof repairs for the buildings that need Repairs, We thanks to you guys watching, we've, we've raised 57760 The least expensive roof pair was a little more than twice that, so we're working on the funding for that. Uh, we are selling tickets uh, for the CR500, so she keeps track of that. The drawing will be November 20th, so between the ticket sales of the 500 and the, um, the generous donations of motorcycles and uh, all the cash donations, we've raised $57,760 in by November 20th, hopefully we'll raise uh, a whole bunch more in ticket sales. If you haven't bought one yet, it's, a, it's at kaplancycles.com, right, Kenny? The ticket sale link? Kaplancycles.com slash raffle. Slash raffle, there it is. 10 bucks, you can win this CR500. Well, I hope everybody had as fun of a Labor Day as we all have had here. It's a beautiful day out. Get out on your bike and ride. We got the giant lucky frog, and uh, it's a great day in Rockville. Another good Labor Day. Hope you, all, you and all your loved ones are having a great Labor Day weekend. Give Junior a call or Billy or Sarah if you want to sell some bikes or come check out the museum. Thanks for watching. God bless America.